a conference that is organized by an, uh, an entity called Citizen University has in its very name a word that is contested. What's a citizen? What does it mean to be a citizen? I've talked about in, uh, in this setting and other settings the ways in which we at Citizen University are rooted in an American context and define the citizen in, in, the, in the name Citizen University not as documentation status under the immigration and naturalization laws of the United States, but as membership in the body. Whether we are pro-social contributors to that body. And recognizing that this isn't just any old body floating out in space on planet Earth, this is an American body. But that that American body looks, feels, sounds, thinks, breathes with so many more layers of complexity than it might seem at first glance. We've tried to program this conference to express that multi-layered beauty and complexity and what Albert Murray called omniculturalism of American life. Not monoculturalism, not multiculturalism, omniculturalism, that we contain multitudes. And we've tried to express that in both the speakers uh, you'll be hearing from and the teachers you'll be learning from, uh, but also in the art that's all around us. I want to actually acknowledge the artists uh, that are a part of this gathering today. Benjamin Hunter, you've heard from in voice and instrument last night and today, and you'll hear from him throughout the day today. Behind me, last night already people were coming up wanting to take selfies with the real star of the show here, which is this beautiful quilt. And those of you who've been to this conference in years past know that this quilt is, is a constant here, made by our friend, a young, dynamic quilting artist named Luke Haynes. And this the first version of it uh, that he did uh, that we had at this conference several years ago was a bit smaller um, and it was so beloved and, uh, uh, and, and, and fit the space that he created an even greater one. It's called Flag of Clothes um, and it is to me this again in the same way that Benjamin's performance was uh, an artistic expression of the same idea. That you can take an American flag, you can take a national anthem and you can slice it up into strips and scramble up those strips and then recompose them in a way that still conveys the essence of the original idea but now has the imprint of the people who've been reclaiming that fabric. On the other side of these curtains as you've walked in you see another piece of art, the origami crane American flag by a couple of great artists here in Seattle. Jocelyn Schmidt and Chris Bauer, made of more than a thousand hand-dyed paper cranes. And later today, when some of you head over to the armory building up there for some of the breakout sessions, uh, you'll see upstairs this just gorgeous, arresting panoply of puppets called the Guardians. And these were great puppets that were created for the Women's March in Seattle earlier this year. And they are on loan from an organization called the Parading Marchers, and each of them is a remarkable woman from the history of this land. So I just wanted to call attention to the art that's around us and the messages that the walls are sending us as well as the speakers. We're gathered here this morning uh, on a Saturday in a way that feels really special to us at Citizen University. As some of you in this room know, uh, right after the election, we began a new tradition, a new project uh, that uh, we've called Civic Saturdays. And this is a gathering that is essentially a civic analog to church. It's not church, it's not synagogue or mosque, but it is a convening that is meant to express and explore the content of our civic religion the creed that Annette Gordon-Reed was speaking about, 
the complexity and the hypocrisy of the ways in which we have and have not enacted that creed. The ways in which the creed still stands there, inviting us, challenging us, pushing us to live up to it, even if, it, even if its words themselves were born of ambivalence, complexity, and contradiction. And so at Civic Saturdays, we gather in just this spirit to learn from one another, to push one another, to be open to one another, as was said beautifully last night by Titus, to be surprised by one another, and to do so in the, in the fellowship of a group of people who don't all think alike. This is a room of people from 29 states, two countries, at least two countries, the United States and Canada. People in here ranging from 15 to mid-70s. There are people in this room who were leaders in the Bernie Sanders campaign, worked for the Obama White House. People in this room who worked for George W. Bush, who helped found the Tea Party. People in this room who are veterans, returned from this generation's war. People in this room who are diehard pacifists. People in this room who are several of those things at once. And so we gather on this Saturday to remember what it is actually to make an unum out of a pluribus. And that's not just some nice little slogan of how awesome is it that we're so diverse and that we've got two of every kind here and people from 29 states. We've, we probably have an electoral college majority in this room right here. <clears throat> how awesome is that? That's great on paper, but really what enacts that paper greatness is the way that we face each other and engage each other and learn from each other. Repair and reckoning, reckoning and repair, are the themes of this conference, and we had such a great initial dive into those topics last night. And I wanted to name two other themes that are inherent in our work at Citizen University and inherent in the design of this gathering today. And these two themes are really parts of an equation. I often say that citizenship is simply, can be defined simply this way, power plus character. Power plus character equals citizenship. If you are literate in power, if you have an understanding of how you make stuff happen, how you move people in public toward particular ends or common ends, if you are able to mobilize people, ideas, money, social norms, state action, then you know something about power. But if all you know is something about power, and if that knowledge of power is untethered to any notion of character, then what you are is a really skillful sociopath. <laughs> We're seeing some of those in public life in these times. People who are highly, highly adept in the arts of power and highly, deeply atrophied in the cultivation of character. When I talk about character, I don't mean individual virtues like diligence and perseverance and honesty, though those matter. I mean character in the collective. How are we in the body? What are the social virtues of being a non-sociopath? Kindness, yes. Compassion, yes. Tolerance, yes a willingness to sacrifice for others more, a willingness to serve others, a mindset of mutuality and reciprocity, a belief that our fates are completely entwined. Throughout this day, we're going to be weaving these two strands of power and character in ways that will help us both reckon with our country as it is and how it's come to be this way and repair what needs repairing. But that literacy and power 
and that regrounding in character is something that we have to be explicit about naming and intentional about growing. It can't just be left to chance. I um, want to tell you, actually, uh, I was a little bit ambivalent about doing this, but uh, uh, was, was pushed by, among others, um, the co-founder of Citizen University, my wife, Janae Kane, um, who, yes? <clears throat> uh, to extend an invitation to you. Uh, actually, two invitations. One is, for those of you who are uh, in or near Seattle, the next Civic Saturday gathering uh, will be April 8th here in Seattle at Town Hall, Seattle. Uh, and we would love for you and all you know to join us there. Uh, but the second invitation, actually, um, the reason why I'm able to string together a few sentences on power and character is that I've spent the better part of the last year and a half uh, writing a book about this topic. And we have been working with our friends at Elliott Bay Books uh, to uh, actually ensure that all of you get access to that book before it is published. The publication date is next Tuesday. Um, but we've got this book here, which is called You're More Powerful Than You Think. And the invitation to you is, if you find that book of interest to you and you decide to get it, is, of course, read it. But more importantly, use it. Use it as an invitation. Use it as a way to spark conversation and learning and action in the circles that you move in. When we leave here at the end of this full, rich, beautiful day, you're going to go back into your lives, into your communities and neighborhoods and faith groups and families, and you're going to be remembering so much of what was said, but you're going to be ultimately trying to figure out what do I do on Sunday or Monday. And we hope that throughout this day, throughout the pages of this book, you'll find guidance in what to do. One of the other things that I want to say and just close with here as we segue into the rest of this morning Yesterday, when we were listening to this beautiful conversation that Krista Tippett and Annette Gordon-Reed and Titus Kafar were having, there were so many little seeds in that conversation that I was trying to go to bed early to get a, you know, bright and early start today that I couldn't go to bed because those seeds already started growing in my mind, in my heart, and I just decided at a certain point, don't try to sleep. Let those seeds grow. And so I stayed up much later than I should have. And I think one of the things about the way that we've put together this gathering and how, frankly, what a ridiculous embarrassment of riches this program is, the people that we have with us, and what a ridiculous embarrassment of riches the people in this room are. That over the course of this day, you're going to have all this feeling of so much is sprouting. I don't know what to do with it, right? And I just want to encourage you, indeed urge you, to say it out loud. And to say it out loud to somebody you don't know. And to say, hi, I'm Eric. I, man, I am just on fire about this thing that I just learned. Or, I, I can't, I'm so, I, I can't get over this thing that ticked me off that was said or done here. And I just got to express that, right? Start now. Start pulling those threads out now. Start feeding that growth. I think the beauty and the power of this gathering resides in the, I don't know, 600 of us who are here. And throughout the arc of this day, as you can see in your program, we're going to find different ways to engage each other. Uh, we have these breakout sessions, and those of you who haven't yet signed up for your sessions um, should make your way during the breaks to those boards and get yourselves signed up. 
Um, at the centerpiece of the day, we have uh, a lunch session, which is going to be family-style lunch, as we always do here, uh, but with a very special uh, guest who has a very special take on what it means to break bread together, right? And so throughout this day, whether in settings like that in plenary or in your walks over to your breakout sessions, I urge you to not keep things to yourself. And I urge you, as you hear what other people courageously decide to share with you, to suspend judgment, to suspend reaction, and to suspend a desire to be either right or more right about whatever, whatever it is they're talking about. Let's meet each other today, and let's show the rest of this country what it's like, truly, to meet each other. <laughs>